Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. Afternoon, Beer Geeks. It's Friday. It's 5pm. It's just about, the weather has just about broken with some biblical rain. Um, And I'm feeling, I, I would be feeling a lot cooler, but I've got a hacked homebrew fridge next to me kicking out the heat as it's trying to cold crash in 25 degree heat how are you brothers you feeling the same as my homebrew fridge i'm all right i'm quite frizzy from uh the heat it's it's doing uh wonders slash nightmares to my copious amounts of hair depending on your point of view <laughs> um you like that episode of friends where monica's hair just goes poof. exactly exactly that and it's already pretty <laughs> poof already so yeah it's a funny, it's, I mean, mate, I don't really like the heat that much. And I know you don't like the heat that much either. It's been way too hot. I'm glad we live in quite a temperate country normally, because uh, I couldn't be doing this all year round. It's, it's bullshit. No, although countries that do do it all, all year round have air conditioning. Oh, yes. Because they're not insane. That is true. They can escape it. I remember when we were in Tampa Bay making all those films, and you basically run from the car <laughs> into the air con. And the worst moments when you come out of the brewery to get back in the car, and the car would be like furnacy, the, like a hot box. Yeah, yes. it was just hell. I just I was thinking back on that the other day because I was thinking how hot it is in the UK, and that I don't feel like I've acclimatized to it. Yet when we were over in Florida, I was walking around in black skinny jeans, uh, and I felt fine. Yeah, you didn't feel fine, Brad. That's that's your rose tinted glasses. <laughs> You you were constantly saying it was impossibly hot. Oh, yeah. And I'd say, like, well, why have you got a T-shirt <laughs> under your shirt? And you'd be like, it's part of the look, man. Fashion. Fashion, baby. <laughs> Fashion. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. I was, I was a bit of an idiot. But, uh, you know, I was feeding myself. I'd lost three stone at that point, Johnny. I was feeling pretty good. <laughs> you wanted, wanted to show the chiseled legs in some skinny jeans. That's it. That's it. <laughs> um right so what have you been up to this week uh i've been action packed i had a bit of a holiday um i was down on the south coast uh my mum's place uh we where do we go we, were, we went to eastbourne we went to bexhill we went to brighton we went to hastings we nearly went to rye but didn't quite have enough time and then just to like uh oh i went kayaking as well in in uh seven sisters country park which is sort of near uh what's it called beachy head um i went sea swimming in brighton i yeah you texted me after that it was like all in caps like i've just been in the sea yes like a, yeah like a five-year-old kid it was great <laughs> man it was so it was it's all it's always like a really renewing wonderful experience when you when you go and float in the sea when it's a lovely warm day and you just sort of have a little paddle around and then float. I can float quite well, so I was just I was just floating around. Um, One of your many talents. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a bit of a, a floater in every sense. Uh, Hor- horrible, <laughs> horrible comparison. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was in. I went to Bison Beach Bar. So like Bison guys that are, they do like craft beer place in uh, Brighton. They've they've opened up a cool beach bar. Um, so I was down there and I bumped into Andrew from Lalamond, uh, uh, the yeast guys. Uh, so that was, that was kind of a, a nice experience. He just had a, 
newly born baby. So he was there with his his mm. wife and wished him, uh, you know, congratulations on it on his on his new bubba. Um, Congrats to him! Yeah, cheers the pint with him, sort of socially distanced and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I've had a good week, man. I've been all over the place. How about you? Well, yeah, I've been all over the place too. I spent a, a very happy uh, Tuesday up at Thornbridge Brewery. Um, so I was up there for uh, a, a Good Beer Hunting article that I'm working on all about Jaipur. Um, so I had an interview uh, with Simon, the MD, and Rob Lovett, the head brewer. And I was given a tour uh, of the hall. So Thornbridge started at a, what is essentially a country house. Um a rich guy, basically, I think it's called Jim, bought the country house uh, and was friends with Simon and was like, I've got all these outbuildings. Um, and they were looking at opportunities at the time. A small brewer's relief had just come in. So they were like, well, maybe there's an opportunity in brewing. So they got two young minds, one of whom was Martin Dickey, now with, now founder of BrewDog, obviously, to come along and, and brew some beers on a brew kit that they bought. And that's sort of how Thornbridge starts. It's a super unusual story compared to most being like some some slightly wealthy white young dude going i'm gonna use a put a brewery in this railway arch kind of vibe um and yeah so i was up there getting the tour of the the country house and the gardens and then the the brewery where they are now which is significantly bigger and i was tasting some absolutely fantastic beer really i mean jaipur we all know is a beautiful west coast ipa um and it's celebrating 15 years um since it was first brewed this year wow um I know, crazy, like one of the oldest beer brands in the country now. Um, and yeah, all the other beers that I tried while I was up there were incredible. In particular, Lucas, which is their uh, their Hellers, um, German Hellers. And it's oh, it's just an astonishingly tasty beer. Like if I drank that at a small brewery in, in Franconia or, or in Munich, I'd be like, this is world class. So the fact that they're making it in Derbyshire is very, very exciting. And I'm going to be drinking a lot more Lucas nice. as of now because I, I was just blown away by how good it was. Um, and they had some lovely sort of New England-inspired uh, low ABV beers as well. I think it was called Astrid. It's like a 3.9% New England beer. And Rob, the head brewer, was like, I don't really like New England beer, but it sells incredibly well and a lot of the brew team like it. So we keep making them. Um, and they're putting them on cask as well, which is interesting. Oh, right. Where sort of, that is you know, interesting. You know, yeah, well, because I guess like because they're using the yeast that bitters, you know, traditional British bitters use, you're getting a similar body and a similar sweetness that makes it really suitable for cask. So I've had it in the, I can't remember what it's called, but I've had the New England stuff in can, um, and I thought it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Um, like Green Green Mountain and, and yeah, that guys. was it. Green Mountain, yeah. yeah, that was the one I've had. I think I dare I say it, I think I got it in a supermarket. Um, Good lord! I know it was it was uh, Christmas time last year, and I remember I I put a little Instagram up on the beach with my nephew. I had a nephew in in one hand uh, as I was cracking. <laughs> I remember this a video. Beer. You're just dangling the baby uh, like yeah, a doll, and that was while drinking was, a beer and saying Merry Christmas. Yeah, I was drinking Green Mountain. I think that was what I was drinking on the beach um, last this. Well, not this time last year, but. Yeah, last year, Christmas time, dangling a baby huh. while I was drinking it. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good beer. Very good it beer. It was a little bit too Michael Jackson for my taste. <laughs> His name's not Blanket. <laughs> Don't worry about it. He's okay. He's all right. He can walk around now. He's fine. Um, right. Well, let's move on to something else we did this week, which was huge, which was our first ever live beer festival. I think it was, yeah, it was pretty amazing, right? It's got to be one of the first ever live streamed beer festivals anywhere like i know yeah, there i mean there's been, been quite some, a few during but, lockdown yeah. but we're probably first first 25 i'd say yeah uh, um yeah and, and it would like we we packed in the tech right we had oh, yeah. five pre-roll videos that we'd recorded in the week before we had animations from from you brad and from greg yeah uh, so we ran it with london craft beer festival which was supposed to be last weekend so greg was on lots of the little segments that we did and he brought a load of animations in. And then on top of that, we were in a pub and doing tours of the pub. So we packed the tech in. And apart from one moment where I forgot to turn the mic back on after <laughs> one of the pre-rolls bits, it was flawless, right? Somehow it was flawless. I don't know how. Um, I think what it might have been was, which I've experienced when you're, when you're away on holiday somewhere, 
it's day drinking and it's somehow if you drink throughout the day small amounts and you're eating as well uh you don't get too drunk whereas when we when we're normally doing a live show it's just relentless we're just like bosh 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 um even if you're only drinking small pours that there, there isn't there isn't usually content to cut away to so we're just filling time by drinking non-stop um so i really enjoyed the format i thought it was great and also bringing other people on like greg and a few other people that we we went over to and had a chat with i think was awesome so you know next time we do one in, in one of our front rooms we'll have to invite some beer folk along i think yeah i think getting getting other people on the streams really worked like when we brought into uh brought on brewers to be interviewed when we've done our boxes for our shorter live shows really works and yeah having those pre-roll videos um gives us a break to reset and maybe have a glass of water uh yeah and um also just sort of keeps the energy changing so that was that was a huge success I, i'm not sure i can endorse brad's idea that drinking during the day doesn't get you drunk um particularly given that we were both quite drunk by the end of that day there was i can't remember which segment it is it's towards the end maybe it's even raised the bar where i've watched it back and we're definitely um loose loose shall we say loosey goosey ah. Lucy Goosey. Yeah. But yeah, it's still in control and somehow are still operating two laptops and our, our magic box that switches between all the cameras pretty pretty adeptly. Yeah man, you you smashed it. Um and I, I didn't I didn't smash anything literally, so win win. <laughs> um yeah, it's great. Anyone who hasn't watched it, I'd say go check it out, even if you just skim it. Um there's some great content in there. Yeah, for sure. Like, just crack a couple of beers and, and sit down and enjoy the full thing. It's now online, all five hours of it. You could you could do it in a couple of sessions if you prefer. Oh, yeah. Um, so during that, like I say, we recorded a couple of videos during the week, which we uh, very quickly edited and, and put into the live show. And those videos will be going live over the next couple of weeks as their own episodes. So we've got a tour with Brick, a uh, discussion with Greg from Five Points, all about uh, modern car scale, uh, sorry, modern bitters and then uh, we also did a video with Mikella uh, at the new brew pub mm. which was our video this week um which has done very well it's at six thousand views and basically the comments are just full of people being jealous that we have a Mikella brew pub in london now because their brew pubs are the best thing about Mikella, i think particularly they're, they're one actually in copenhagen on the water um where they they make loads of amazing sour beers uh wild ales it's called baghaven or baghaven or baghaven i'm not quite sure uh, and they make incredible beer there and it's a lovely tap room just just looking out over the water um and now we have one on exmouth market which is equally lovely there's no water in exmouth market but it is it's it's like a little piece of old london um very traditional kind of like high street in kind of clark and well i guess still kind of clark well heading towards angel maybe um yeah and it's i i used to go drinking around there a lot um when i when i used to work as a designer up in town because it's full of like graphic design companies and media companies and stuff um it's just it's just a great spot i loved it yeah it's got some amazing restaurants on that street some amazing like like it's got bar kick which is like a, a table football yeah, bar and kick. Yeah, man. Brazilian theme bar. I yeah, think. I used to drink in there years and years and years ago, like before I knew what good beer was, and I was more about just fun times. So I dare I say it, I probably drank like I can't even think. It would have been like Corona or something. I, I have no yeah, idea. I think it's probably Corona being served yeah, in there. I'm pretty sure uh, I wouldn't yeah. have touched a Desperado or something. But but if they had a Cuban <laughs> like beer, I, I would have been drinking that, no doubt. Maybe Madeo. Maybe that was in there. Yeah, maybe a Modelo. Yeah. yeah. Um, I used to drink in there quite a bit because I went to university just, just up the road from there. So we used to go to Bar Kick quite a lot. And I, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not blowing my own trumpet here. I'm very good at table football. Football guy, uh, yeah. I used to live in a house for many years that had one. But I got hustled bad in there by some, some guy who was probably about, I don't know. So I was, I was 21. He he was probably forty or fifty, but in my head he is super old. Um, and he he for uh, for a round of drinks he took me and my friend on, and we were both pretty cocky. We thought like, well, he he could well be hustling us. Like nobody takes that bet unless they're pretty confident. Uh, and he he beat us ten nil in about two minutes. Whoa. It was it was incredible. He was just you know that thing that that people can do where they dribble down the line. 
instead of like passing up and like he was passing accurately down the line up <laughs> diagonally through our players to his other players just moving it up the field by passing and then just poof, straight in and there was just no way of competing with him so we had to buy him a round of well shit beer so a football wizard he <laughs> was he was a foosball wizard wow um yeah, so do check out that video about McKellar. Maybe we should go to Bar Kick do a video. But uh, yes, check out that video. Uh, it's a really cool place because it, they're serving from tanks. So what that means is you, you ferment in one tank and you move it straight over to another tank rather than putting it into a keg, which means you get what you could call tank fresh beer. Basically, it means it's never seen light. It's never seen air. So it's never seen oxygen. So it's as fresh as it can be. And because it's kept super chilled the whole time, then it's all cold chain. And it also means that like their lagers in these big serving tanks are just improving in tank because they're lagering away. They're, they're conditioning away while they're waiting to be served. So while most beers get worse and worse as they get old, just the lagers there, the lager yeast ones, will be cleaning up nicely and getting more and more delicious. Yeah, this is what I kind of blows my mind. Like the lager one especially, I was like, what? It actually gets better? Uh, as, it, as time goes on, this is this is amazing. Um, and that's kind of the case with 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 all of that 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 uh, kind of style. If you can get it out in um, you know Czech or wherever, um, but this for me, tank beer is is very romantic and something that I aspire to. So I think these guys are. I mean, are Pilsner still doing tank stuff in in London, maybe in a couple of joints. Um, I think only in two now. Yeah, because that was always a bit of a treat. Mm. It never quite tasted the same because it had travelled. But no, well, it's a different kind of tank fresh. Yeah. It's not the tank fresh that you'd get um, no. at the McKellar because it's been. It's actually within those tanks. I think it's a a bag that's within there, um, and it's obviously travelled hundreds of miles to get yeah. there. So it will probably have seen some temperature fluctuations. So yeah. it's it's similar. It was still a but treat. But also, I mean, the reason it doesn't taste as good over here is just because it's not poured as well. Exactly. Yeah. But hey, Ball man, poor with Pilsner. The McKellar bar, I thought, was was amazing. So, like anyone who can get down there and support, uh, you know, the city centre bars, which are really going to be struggling right now because, you know, city boys and stuff are not are not out drinking as much as they would be normally. Um, yeah, yeah, they're miss, missing the suit. Stood outside. That's it. Drinking. Four pints of Peroni and then going home. I mean, we we don't like the suits, but they kind of you kind of need the suits to make the city bars function. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of lovely people. Oh yeah, in suits, sorry, so I, I didn't mean I, I, that dismiss came, all suits. That came out a bit harsh. What it meant was, you know, we've all had a bad experience <laughs> with a gang of suits. Like you might we do sure a gang have. of hoodies or whatever. They can become antisocial monsters. Um, yeah, I'm more scared of people in suits than people in hoodies. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, get out there if you can and, 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 and like have a safe uh, drink out and about. Absolutely. Um, so our comment for the week doesn't actually come from, from this week's video, which was all mostly, like we say, just people being jealous. Um, what, what we've plucked a, a comment from this week is going all the way back to last week and our video all about are you buying your craft beer wrong which <laughs> we had some comments going come on guys that's a clickbait title and i just want to clarify i don't think it's clickbait if we actually answer the question exactly to my mind clickbait is where it's something trashy and uh like that gets you to click but then the actual content has nothing to do with that so it's like, you won't believe what this person did, and then what they do is practically nothing. Or it's a picture of a girl in not so many clothes, or a guy in not so many clothes going like, mo like wardrobe fails, and there's never any wardrobe fails. Not speaking from experience here, but um, that that's what I think clickbait is. Whereas we answer the question, Brad, don't we? Well, big time. We answer the question over and over. There's so many answers. <laughs> there's some... Some Very repetitive, strange, repetitive video. static walking from me uh, on my sofa, and lots of informative <laughs> chat from Johnny. Um, mate, it's a it's a twenty one thousand views, which which is not bad for like a week. So, you know, call us no. clickbait or or whatever. It got it got great traction, great chat. Yeah, and and the the thumbs up are still there. Mm, you know exactly. Uh, we got well, we got fourteen thumbs down, which is more than usual. Maybe those are 14 people who went, goddamn clickbait, but they didn't engage with the content. I was going to say, I reckon those 14 thumbs down might be from um, people that own bottle shops that, that have got a lot of stuff that isn't in fridge. 
<laughs> yeah. Bottle shops without fridges. Yeah. Yes. We we do apologize to any bottle shops without fridges. And obviously it's a bad time to say you need fridges, but you need fridges. Um so comments. Uh we got a comment from Shano Travels Jebs. Uh, YouTube names are just glorious. <laughs> There's some great ones here. There's one guy called his his username is Yabba Dabba Doo. Of course. Enjoyed that. Um, so he was saying, I'm with you on keeping beers chilled for quality, but the majority of stores I visit have a lot of beers on the shelves at room temperature. And in these times, we're encouraged to stay home and get beers delivered. Keeping beers constantly refrigerated isn't always practical. Obviously, the best before and packaged dates are a good indicator, but is there that much loss of flavour at room temperature? So, <laughs> luckily, we have a video all about that. So I linked Shano Travels Jebs to our video where we got four bottles of Punk IPA mm. and we put them in four different locations. We put them outside in sunlight, inside in sunlight, in a cool dark cupboard and in a fridge. So the four places that might end up having beer. Um, and we could, I think I think we left them, it was about six hours and we could taste the difference between all four, couldn't we? Big time, big time. It's, I mean, it's shocking the uh the difference especially of like stuff that's been light struck and uh you know just kept at like you know ungodly temperatures um you get all kinds of stuff going on which you don't want um and it just kills flavor yeah for sure like the light is the thing that acts quickest it can light strike in just a couple of couple of seconds so that's what happens quickest so that's why we got the most from that but anything that was was a in the light so it was getting warmer quicker and was within uh at room temperature not outside that was the worst one and you could taste the light strike which is kind of skunky kind of funky and you could taste some some oxidation some loss of hop character even within six hours so it depends what that ambient room temperature is it depends whether there's light on it and it depends how long it sat there like we found even in that very video we had a delicious tasting data that had must have been on the fridge for a couple of days at the very least because it was nearly sold out and that still tasted great so we're not saying do not buy from shelves what we're saying is if they're on the shelves check the the canned on date yeah. and don't let it be more than a couple of weeks if you think it's been on the shelf um we also had some other comments from people who are clearly very much in the know uh, saying, yeah, buying from the fridge is all very well, but you don't actually know how that beer's been treated before it got to the fridge. Mm -hmm. So you don't know whether it was kept out back before it was put in the fridge. You don't know whether the distributor was a cold chain distributor. Um, you know, in summer, that is a big issue. With temperatures at like 35 degrees, like we've had in the last couple of days, any any distributor that's not keeping it in the fridge, you know, there will be some damage to that beer. So we don't know everything, but... Just because you don't know everything, that doesn't mean you can throw all the windows, all, all the rules out the window. You should still go to the fridge because then at least you know that it's been looked after at that point. So it's a slightly safer bet, is, is what I yeah, think. Yeah, I, I would say to that that the if you can buy something fresher by looking at you know how long ago it was made and buying something that was made not a very long time ago, um, and if you're buying it and it's in a fridge at that point, then you've got to hope that it's had a longer sorry it's had a shorter life of mistreatment so there are yeah. less opportunities for it to have been fucked up not to be too uh crude about it <laughs> so i think yeah, i think absolutely. all of our points are massively valid um anyone who mm. hasn't watched it go and watch it because uh you you'll be drinking better beer by by the end of the video just by picking you know being a bit cheesier about where what you're picking out on the shelf yeah absolutely absolutely and it means you know, in times when we, we don't have a lot of money, uh, a lot of us, because of everything that's happened, if you're going to spend six quid on a can, you're going to want it to be good. There's, you know, there's nothing more uh, depressing than spending six quid on a can that mm. you don't really enjoy and you just leave about a third of it, which happens to me all the time. I mean, craft beer is, is not known for its consistency still. <laughs> um, and there are lots of breweries that can make very stable technical beer that, that is much more stable. But that's not shade to those that can't yet. They're working towards it. And if you drink that stuff fresh, it's absolutely delicious. So, yeah, check out that video. Check out, I'll also put a link to the Brewdog, uh, the oxidation and skunking video that we did so that you can uh, get the skinny on, on how quick flavor is affected. Um, Do you know what I would think would be an interesting video to make? Is go on. <laughs> buying some macro craft beer, uh, sorry, some macro beer like a Corona, which comes in a clear glass bottle, 
and seeing if there's any difference between leaving it out in full daylight, full heat, full sunlight, and storing it in a cool, dark place. Because I, I reckon that there isn't. Or I think that they're building in to that that design. Um, that could be part of the flavor profile. Is well, it's gonna get effect. It's gonna get light struck. It's gonna. It's not gonna be treated well. So we have to just make it taste as bland as possible and, and any kind of off flavours that might come along through the, that mistreatment are going to be part of Corona flavour. Um, I mean, it, it's well documented that that is part of the Heineken mm. flavour. So Heineken comes in a green bottle, which doesn't stop light strike. So that is that is a signature thing. And, and uh, we did a video where we compared macro and micro craft lagers. Um and we could taste we could taste the Heineken pretty clearly, I seem to remember, because of that skunkiness. Um, so that's definitely part of it. With Corona, I think that that has... Because Light Strike, it's attacking hop compounds. There are almost no hops <laughs> uh, in Corona. It's probably all hop extract. It's added at the start of the boil, and it's at a tiny, tiny amount. So probably the Light Strike won't be that severe on Corona. And it's probably pasteurized so v- v- viciously yeah. that... Storing it at cold or hot probably won't that make that much difference because there's no, you know, biological processes that could even happen in that sterilized bottle. So I'd imagine it matters less for Corona, but it'd be an interesting, uh, interesting experiment to see if we can make Corona taste worse. And there, there's the video title: Can we make Corona taste any worse? <laughs> so co- um, Corona. So maybe that will happen. It's kind of like the Twinkie of uh, of beer in that it's like indestructible. <laughs> indestructible. I like it. Yeah. When when the apocalypse comes, which might be on the way, we'll all be drinking Corona because it's the only beer that hasn't got oxidised and skunked. <laughs> God. <laughs> like, what a terrible prospect. I'm more worried about that than the end of the world, to be honest. Yep. Yeah, me too. Jeez. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die drinking good beer. Yeah, man. Uh, and on that note, we'll call it quits. We're at 26 minutes. We're six minutes over, Brad. Oh, wow. We're getting more and more waffly as the world goes goes on. Um, we should probably just yeah kill the world and drink Corona. So guys, do check out those videos. All the links are down below. We'll see you guys on Wednesday for another video from our live show on Saturday, and there's a link to that in the descriptions box as well and we have a very exciting homebrew video coming to you in a couple of weeks which we might be able to reveal uh, perhaps in next week's podcast all the best guys see ya the bubble podcast is brought to you by the nerds behind youtube's craft beer channel head to youtube.com slash the craft beer channel to watch this week's video and over 400 more exciting episodes if you love what we do please 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 do subscribe and even join our patreon at patreon.com slash craft beer channel love and beer